Hey everyone, welcome back to Part Out, where we talk about off-road rigs and accessories. Now today we're on Drummond Island, Michigan, and we've got a 2009 Hummer H3T Alpha Edition. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna tell you all about this truck, and then we're gonna go take it out on some ORV trails and see what it can do. ended up coming through so instead of having all of our cameras get destroyed in the rain we ended up hopping in the Hummer and going straight for the trailhead. I got my buddy Andy here with me he's a longtime friend of mine big Jeep guy and uh, figured why not invite my Jeep friends to be in a Hummer right? Yeah why not I mean <laughs> let's see what this thing can do. It's always fun to kind of mix things up I mean these these Hummers have had a really bad rap ever since they really came out was I think it was like in 2005 or 06 or something like yeah. that. Yeah I mean pretty much since they got away from the H1, got more civilianized, I guess. They, they kind of did. They're the, the H2, I mean, when that came out, people were really excited about it, and then they come to find out it was just kind of like a suburban, just yep. dressed up kind of thing. Basically. Um, but, but when the H3 came out, things were interesting because it was a small, tight, nimble thing. Yeah, they were getting in the midsize market, which is definitely not what anybody expected. Yeah. So it was definitely a change. and. After being in this thing, I mean, I'm actually surprised at how much room there is in these for, I mean, you look at the outside of them and it looks real <laughs> yeah, compact these short and windows. short yeah. windows and you really don't think there's much room in here, but I mean, not that I'm a huge guy by any means, but there's definitely plenty of elbow room and leg room in this, which is impressive. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, testing out the rear seating in this truck, because this is the, the truck version. Um, and this segment of vehicle, as far as like, like the midsize trucks, every back seat I've ever been in, because I'm 6'3", I cannot fit in them. So you got the new 2019 Chevy Colorados, the Tacomas, all these trucks, I can't fit in them. And then I'm in this thing, and I've got actually like three to four inches of leg room in front of my knees. The rear headroom is a little bit tight, and that's because they got this giant moon roof here that it has to go back into, but I can still fit back there just fine, which is pretty cool. So as I stated at the beginning of this video, this is the Alpha edition of the truck uh, H3. And basically what you get with the Alpha Edition is you get a 5.3 liter V8, which you can agree with me on this, is much better than that five cylinder they were cranking Absolutely. out. Absolutely, <laughs> that was horrible. But the LS base is, I mean, obviously it's widely used and swapped in a lot of things, but when it comes from the factory, especially in a midsize truck like this, it's definitely impressive. It is a great amount of power. I mean, we're talking 300 horsepower, 320 foot pounds of torque, on a small, smaller mid-size pickup. I mean, this thing, you, you were driving it yesterday and you were just, the entire time you were telling me how much this thing just wanted to get up and it go. It did, I mean, it was, it likes the skinny pedal, that's for sure, but it definitely probably likes the fuel too, I'm sure. <laughs> it does, this is a very thirsty truck. Uh, we pretty much average anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per gallon driving this thing. If we're really being nice to it, maybe 16, but that's like, it does not happen often. But it's more about miles per gallon than miles per gallon anyway, so. You definitely get that in this truck. I mean, right now we're crawling over just a bunch of, I mean, this is a pretty rocky trail that we're on right now, and we're, honestly, I feel like it's a Cadillac <laughs> compared it's, to some Jeeps. Surprisingly, for being a torsion bar truck, it actually is not bad. Now, granted, we are aired down to eight pounds, so that yeah. makes a huge difference. I mean, if we were at street pressure, 35 pounds, this thing would be absolutely just rocking us all over the place more than it is now. The other thing is, now you did put a zone leveling kit and some Fox 2.0 shocks on this, didn't you? Yes, and if you guys want to check that out, we have a whole video on how we installed that uh, on our YouTube channel. I mean, turnkeys are a very easy thing to install on these torsion setups. After doing that, I mean, these trucks, they're very, uh, I want to say nose divey from the factory. They are. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're very low in the front. Um, so it's definitely, a, I would say, almost an absolute need to at least put that leveling kit there on the front and then get, obviously, the Fox shocks or some sort of extension for a shock to uh, go with the extra lift. Well, and then bumping up to a performance shock like the Fox 2.0 from the factory shocks definitely makes a big improvement on ride quality and dampening ability of the shock. So that's definitely a big plus for this. I mean, even even without airing down, it makes a big difference. I also feel like that is the one fallback of this truck is the the suspension that they decided to go with for it. I think it's not, there's not much travel on the suspension for yeah. this. I mean, the, the torsion bar system that GM has used and is using in this has been 
dead nuts reliable for a long time. I mean, and that's why they continue to use it. Even to this day, they still use it in their 2500, 3500 trucks. Yeah, it's we, very reliable. It works, it does what it needs to do. It's not great for off-roading. It's though. not great for off-roading. And that's one, one thing I kind of wish with the Hummer, at least the H3s, that they would have considered doing a solid axle for the front of these things to directly compete with the Jeep market. Um, it, it just, it makes everything a whole lot easier as far as just suspension, ev just everything is easier. Now with this having the, it's the alpha package, but it's also got an adventure package, right? Yes. So, so we, with the adventure package, um, we've got uh, front and rear electronic lockers with 410 gearing uh, all around and then um, now that's very similar to the Jeep world of the Rubicon. Yeah, you've got a four to one transfer case, which this has, correct? Yep. So then in a Rubicon, you've got 410 gears front and rear with electronic lockers front and rear. The only difference would be that the Rubicon has got an electronic disconnect sway bar, which this does not. But you could easily just go in and put some manual. Yeah, some manual disconnects yeah. I think would make a pretty good difference in this, even though it is IFS and is torsion bar i think it would help yeah back to the torsion bar topic though when i was talking about like solid axles the reason why i'm a little bit confused is because a lot of people think this truck is completely based off the chevy colorado platform when it really isn't after we actually started tearing this truck apart trying to figure out certain things that we could try to carry over from the colorados absolutely nothing carries over <laughs> um, suspension wise uh, so that kind of makes things it makes me think because when they were designing this truck, usually you want to try and have as much carryover as you can to save on cost and stuff like that. So if, if they ended up having to remachine, remanufacture all these parts and pieces for the Hummer, why didn't they just think just to throw a solid axle in the front, just call it a day? That's just the question I've always asked. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, if you're doing that much work to redesign and remake everything, then why not do something completely different? Mm -hmm. Why make it just a little bit different? But at the same time though, when you have this IFS front suspension, the truck rides amazing on road. Like this is one of the best driving trucks I've ever driven. And it's it weird was. to say that because it's a Hummer, you would expect this thing to be really kind of rough. Right, and it, it was smooth on the way up here. I mean, yep. the six hours up here to Drummond Island, it, it was a nice smooth ride. We, we mentioned that we lift, we put the zone lift on here. There's a few other accessories that we actually modified this truck with. Um, we actually have the Yakima roof rack on here that has quick disconnect um, bars so that way uh, when you're wanting to go out on the trails and you don't want those bars to get hung up on stuff, they usually just click right off and you can click them right back on. Um, we use the, the roof rack though to haul our kayaks because yep. I mean, when you're on Drummond Island, there's a lot to do out here. So you can go kayaking, biking, and uh, just all sorts of exploring that you can do out here. It's just a beautiful spot to be. It is. Drummond Island is absolutely one of my favorite places, not only in Michigan, but just in general. It's There's definitely a lot of different things to see out here and a lot of different things to do. Um, so on the bed of this truck, this is where things get kind of, I would say, like quirky a little bit. So the bed of this truck is 4.9-ish feet. It's not a full five feet. Um, and they, they kind of, I think they did that for ground clearance for departure because the departure angle on this truck, from what it looks like from the outside, may not be great. But after some of the trails we've been putting this truck through, we've been pretty surprised. It, yeah, it actually, hasn't hit once. It's not bad. It, yeah, it hasn't. Nope. I was surprised. Um, but where things get kind of weird is when you open up the tailgate, uh, you'll notice that the, the latch on there, they did not actually make a locking latch for the tailgate. So what most Hummer H3T owners have done is they've actually noticed that the 2009-2010 uh, Chevy Silverado 1500 tailgate uh, latches, or it's a direct plug-in swap. So everyone that has this truck has already probably already swapped that out there. So if you're trying to break into one of the beds of these trucks, probably not going to happen. Um, but another thing that we did was we actually put a uh, X-Tang 2.0 solid fold uh, tonneau cover on this thing. And it's, it's a pretty solid setup. There's only three left in existence uh, because there are very little accessories you can buy for these trucks without fabbing them up yourself. So right here, we're actually coming to some tight stuff with the trees. And I'm gonna make sure going over a tree currently. Yeah, make sure I don't take out any of the, the bed panels because there are not many of these trucks left on the market <laughs> or for replacement parts for that matter. So you mean parts are hard to find? Parts are very hard to find. We actually had to replace the upper control arms of this truck uh, when we first got it and um, 
Rock Auto was just scratching their heads and they were searching their warehouses and uh, they ended up managing to find two. Um, two, like that's that was it? that was it. And if you, well, if, good thing that's all you needed. Well, and I mean, you know, Rock Auto, they have everything. Yeah, like, they do. Um, but also, I was I was talking about the bed earlier, and there's a like this random plastic liner thing that they decided to do for it. So as if the bed wasn't small enough, they actually shrunk it by uh, three three to four inches on both sides, and they put these plastic covers with little cubbies in there that really I couldn't find a use for. I never even looked at those. Yeah, there, there's, there's little like there's four cubbies, two on each side. They unfold, and there's like barely enough room to fit a small can of like sunscreen in there. Oh, that small. Huh? That small. <laughs> I was thinking maybe if you had like gloves and a small rope that I don't know what maybe you would a use. a toe strap? You can't even fit a toe strap in there. So oh. jumper cables? You could probably fit some jumper cables. Okay. That's, well, that's, some, that's beneficial. I, yeah. But the other thing is though, is that if you have that, the whole thing is plastic in the back. So if you were to leave the truck without a, a cover over it out in the sun, we've already noticed it happened to this truck and the, the whole bottom floor is warped and it's popped up. So it's, it looks kind of bad, but it's still functional be going in there soon and we are cutting through some tight quarters here yep there's a tree if I can there. get a shot of that tree that's gonna banged up somebody's hit it yep and it's not this truck not today although it might be that tree oops <laughs> all right freaking tight you got Andy out there spotting for me because that got a little tighter than I was hoping What you thinking? I think you need more skinny pedal. More skinny pedal? All right, yeah. I was trying to crawl it. Give it. Just ease right through it, you're good. Oh, okay, we're not gonna give it. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know what the fun in that is. Cause I don't even think you touched the gas I, pedal on I that, didn't, did I just, it just crept itself right over. I didn't even have the lockers on. You got all day on this side. Well, I don't have all day on that side, <laughs> so that's good. Whoop. But the four low with the four to one transfer case definitely, I mean, it'll get as you going. You can see, it'll walk you right through just about anything. All right, so we're going to try and take this way. There's like in some other spots here where the center diffs are probably going to get hung up. So we're going to try and make our way around it, and we're going to make some friends with the trees here. Come passenger a little bit. There you go. Straight. Yep. Well, uh, rock sliders. Uh, we ended up fabbing those up at my buddy Goose's shop. He uh, decided that we should get some quarter-inch thick steel rock sliders on the side of it, and thank goodness we did that because we have been smacking the crap out of them. We're definitely testing those out. That's for sure. Mid-sized trucks, as much fun as they are to wheel, they have a uh, pretty long wheelbase. I'm gonna try not to take out my nice shiny chrome mirror here because Hummers need all the bling they can get. Woo, that's tight. Okay. Straighten her out. Now we got, it looks like we got ourselves a little bit of a rock climb up here, so this will be fun. It's raining, by the way, so everything is completely slippery, so that makes everything much more fun. Got her in four low for this one. Uh, no lockers, so let's see what happens. I think we can handle it. Lopes up. Nice and easy. Oh, there's something. I was like, this, this feels like there's nothing there until I feel that. <laughs> yeah, well, what do we got skid plates for anyways, right? Yep. The Alpha does come stock with a lot of skid plates underneath. Like almost everything is covered under there. Plus, then you have the rock sliders. Yep, that definitely helps. That was almost too easy. That was almost too easy. Yep. Okay. Well, that is the one thing that I can't really lean out very easily yep. and look at tires. Things that we that are is a bit of a challenge. Yep. 
Oh, there's our spotter. Good thing our camera guy can spot us too. Oh, 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 oh you got her. I think, I felt I think you, you had it. You're just on the sliders. Just perfect. Look at that, nice and easy. Did not even have to use the lockers. That wheelbase though. That wheelbase <laughs> does create a touch bit of a challenge. I do have to say though, I think that the H3T, at least the Alpha editions, were extremely underrated when they came out. I don't think GM even bothered to market them. I think I saw like one, maybe one commercial. Yeah, I didn't even know anything about them until a couple years after they were out. Yeah, and they're, they're kind of these hidden gems. I mean, granted, uh, I contacted a friend of mine at General Motors and the way this truck was spec'd with the cloth seats, the moonroof, the Alpha package, the Adventure package, with 33 inch tires, all that stuff. Um, there was a hundred of this one made in particular with the black paint, which is crazy to think about because you're like, well, it's been 10 years. How many of the, that hundred are still left? Kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, here we are with one of a hundred. Trying not to scrub it against trees, but what's the point of having an off-road vehicle like this if you're not gonna be out using it, really? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's probably a bunch of other people that have this truck that are preserving it in a garage somewhere, so we'll leave it to them. Yeah. Or it comes to find out that we're all having fun in this truck and there's not gonna be any of them left. <laughs> They'll be left. I mean, they're not gonna go anywhere. They're just gonna be scratched up and might have a few body panels missing, that's all. They're, they're gonna turn into X-Jays is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> eh, I wouldn't go that far. Our uh, camera guy that we had filming earlier, his name is Hayden. He, uh, well, I mean, you can check this video out and that's all you need to know about Hayden. All right, I got a full bottle of water. Okay. What the f But Hayden is, is saving his money right now to get an XJ. He actually found out about our part out channel from the XJ video that we shot, uh, where we took a, a garage sale XJ and made it super capable with his own lift kit and all that stuff and took it out to an off-road park and just beat the crap out of it. Speaking of trail users, I think we're about to use this trail pretty good. <laughs> yeah. This is a oh, 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 there we go. We're high yes. centered. Drag it through Hummer. <laughs> that looked worse than it actually was. I just saw all the rocks that were hanging right up there in the middle and I was like, this is going to get loud. I mean, there was a bypass, but who uses bypasses? Other Hummer owners. <laughs> <laughs> this truck has been amazing. We drove it six or seven hours up here. Yeah. Um, yeah, put it on the ferry, which is, that's always a fun experience when you put your uh, rig on a ferry to get go to an off-road island like this. Oh. Not really sure. Oh my goodness. We got a good one. You ready, Nate? All right. Seat belt for safety. So we got two otters. Hopefully we can do this right. Yep. As I try not to fall. Come passenger. Okay, straight. Passenger a little bit. Yep. Yep, nice and easy. Yep, you're doing right. good. We're good over here, Phil? Beautiful. Come passenger. Yep, you're looking good. Okay. Now you're gonna go driver. Walk it up. Are we good over there? Yeah, okay. Keep her going. You got her. Oh yeah. You see that tire wrinkle? That really just goes to show you what a low range gear ratio with low air pressure can do. This truck does not sit terribly high off the ground, but just enough to be an off-road vehicle. And that was, a, that was a trail that a lot of Jeeps were struggling to get up yesterday. So that was, a, that was pretty impressive from this truck to not even have to really back up. Yeah, definitely the, the four to one gear ratio in the transfer case makes a huge difference. Oh no, that says doors. Oh. We got a door open, your door's open. Good job, driver. <laughs> <laughs> kind of riding around driving this truck for, I don't know, a month or so, we've 
come to notice that the uh, the exterior styling of this actually I think still holds up to modern day standards. I think yeah. it still looks like a pretty good truck for it being yeah. 10 years old. It's a it good. it's a good truck. When you come inside the truck, however, I mean that's where you, I think you can see the age of it. Um, the entire dash is just one giant solid plastic sheet, and it's all yep, it's all hard plastics and stuff. Not yeah. that I, I mean I'm sure that's what I would expect for. 2009 era visibility i would say front and side to side you're good looking out the back i would say is pretty much pointless especially if you have your tonneau cover folded up i think you've got maybe six inches of height from your back windshield it's a it's a pretty tight visibility back there and then most of these trucks didn't have backup cameras i don't even think any of them had backup cameras then um from the factory and but a lot of it's it's super easy to swap in a, a head unit there with a backup camera and once you have that done this is it's a pretty easy truck to drive yeah. you know you're mentioning that the passenger seat seems to stay two to three inches lower and i mean looking at them you don't think so but i can tell you from driving this thing yesterday the driver's seat does sit up a little bit and it it's definitely beneficial for visual reasons and being able to see out of the vehicle yep and that you're not awkwardly having your arm jacked up yeah, <laughs> from trying to rest it on the side not as bad on the driver's side now the short window height does make it a little more difficult to still stick your head out the window but yeah small potatoes that's a that's that's nitpicking yeah it uh, is the uh the center console here uh obviously yeah we put the new head unit in there so we can have you know auxiliary and satellite rate all that cool stuff but um the actual dials uh, everything if you, some people call it like the, the glove test so if you're like driving with gloves on and you're, you're on the trails and you've been working on stuff you can still access and uh, maneuver like the the temperature gauges the lockers all that stuff you can still do it uh, it's very easy to get a hold of that's one thing general motors i think has done a great job of in all their trucks is that they've rubberized all the buttons and it's super easy to grip onto and and, and touch and all that stuff yeah, i would agree with you um, as far as the center console goes you got just your your sh main shifter and then you can actually shift it uh, between three gears uh, whenever you want to you have first second and third it's a four-speed transmission but i mean it works typical for the time period yeah yep that was well before six and eight speed transmissions became a thing behind the shifter you got two cup holders and then you got your center console the center console surprisingly has a lot of storage room it's got a, a top tray and you remove that and the thing goes way way down in there and you can put all sorts of things um, tools gloves sandwiches did you say sandwiches a really neat thing about the back seat, obviously, is the amount of space you get. And I mean, obviously, like I said before, I, I'm you know six three. I can fit back there and have extra space. It's pretty cool. You don't actually get that often on, in current modern midsize pickups. Um, but the other thing is, is that the rear seats can fold completely flat. So uh, I didn't think that would be a really cool feature until I drove the new Colorado. I drove the new uh, Tacoma, and also the new uh, Ford Ranger. I've driven that a lot recently, and none of them fold flat. It's, I, I, you would think that would be something that should be fairly simple and standard. You would think. I mean, even in the Silverados, the full-size trucks, they don't fold flat. The bottom of the seat folds up, and it really, it, it, I don't know. It, I just, I really like it folding flat. My you get your own little, like, bench table kind yeah, of thing. It's, it's my nice. My 5 they fold down and fold flat, so it gives you that entire back seat area to be able to put stuff, which is nice. Mm-hmm kind of started to gather this the, the alpha truck version has to be I think one of Hummer's best vehicles they've ever made and that's including including the H1 hear me out hear me out I know Andy's just like burning up inside because everyone loves the H1 I personally love it too but for an everyday drivable vehicle that you can use I feel that this is you have a full you know almost five foot bed not like the H2 where they tried to make a truck version out of that and I, I don't even know what they were thinking that's irrelevant that, uh, that thing, okay you know, yeah that's a glorified suburban it is a glorified suburban but you have a v8 you have plenty of power now the h1 minus the alpha that they made did not have enough power that thing went i think zero to 60 in two weeks <laughs> <laughs> i've driven okay. them you've okay. driven them we both know this now i'm not going to disagree with you that this thing for everyday use is pretty impressive yes it is i am going to disagree with the best ever made statement okay what, what do you think you can't beat the h1 with the independent suspension on all four corners yeah it wasn't made to go fast 
but it was made to go anywhere and it definitely did that now by go anywhere that thing is like seven something feet wide well it runs over whatever it needs <laughs> it, to go it moves the obstacle yes. okay it moves the world because i've noticed with this truck being small and nimble well not sm it is still a very large vehicle but it's pretty you know narrow like a jeep and can squeeze through trails and then um I, I just feel like the with the power, the gearing, and the transfer case in this thing, I feel that it, it could very well almost outwheel an H1. I'm sensing a new video. Okay, so if you guys have a Hummer H1 that you want to wheel and you actually wheel it, let us know, send a comment, find us on Facebook, shoot us a message. We would be happy to try and set something up to see how an H3T Alpha compares against a Hummer H1. I feel like that would be pretty fun to watch. I think it would be heck with watching it oh well, you want to do it <laughs> give me the keys son <laughs> but in, in all reality though let us know in the comments what do you think do you think the h3t alpha is one of the best hummers made for everyday use i'm talking trail use to yeah. going to the groceries Day yes use it. yes it's yes but i guess you can also argue that the best hummer ever made which hummer was never intended to be an everyday use so vehicle it was, it was intended to was beat people use. up Island. and what we're going to do now is we're going to go find this uh, spot that a lot of people talk about it's called connor's hole if you uh don't know what this is we're going to hit it right now in this video but if you want to watch it with some other vehicles that we did we actually went out with jks manufacturing and we took their jeep out and we hit connor's hole last summer with it as well so uh it's a really cool spot to be so um let's go find it All right, guys, so we made it to what's called Connor's Hole. It's a very uh, iconic spot on Drummond Island. And basically what it is, it's this very like long uh, swamp marshy area. But the, the neat thing about it is you're going, you're, you know, you're fording your truck through some deep water, but it's all hard rock at the base. So you really shouldn't have too many issues like, you know, getting stuck in mud and all that stuff. So I think this is going to be a pretty interesting test for this Hummer to see exactly, you know, what it can do when we're in deep water. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and send her on through. Oh, it's getting deep. Oh, boy. Stuff like this makes me nervous. I was riding past here with a buddy one time in his FJ, and it was deeper than he thought. He sunk it. <laughs> I can see water out your window. Yep. I can also hear uh, the bottom dragon against a bunch of rocks. Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is deep. Yeah. This, oh. Yeah. It's, it is definitely above the bumper. Yeah, I can just feel, there's a lot of like, you know, soot and stuff at the base that's kind of like rubbing up against the bottom of the truck and I can feel that the, the tires are just pushing a bunch of uh, muck around, but we're making it. We're at the tail end of this, so I think we're gonna be just fine. Oh, oh. how did you not see that? <laughs> you know, my <laughs> my sonar was wasn't working. <laughs> we forgot. To All right, we're docked. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for today. The Hummer H3T Alpha is an awesome truck on and off-road. We're really happy with the way it performs. Uh, go ahead and uh, comment down below with what you think your thoughts are on the, the Hummer H3s and H3Ts, if they're cool or not cool. Hey, I kind of want to know what your thoughts are. Um, as always, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys next time.